Now, even though it's a defensive movement, the mass movement to defend the retirement age of France has impressed the world, and it's one of the biggest uh, mobilizations in Europe on class issues since 1968. So it's a very exciting time to be a Marxist in France because all the key questions about social change are being posed. The role of parliament, the role of trade union leaders, how revolutionaries should intervene, uh, etc. Uh, many millions have been on the streets in hundreds of towns. Mass strikes and smaller wildcat strikes, occupations, school blockades, motorway blockades, direct action, power cuts in Conservative Party headquarters, and so on, have all been part, and riots, have all been part of the mix. And the movement has not yet either won or uh, completely lost, uh, but it has retained the support of the vast majority of the population who do not believe the government squeals about the need for us all to tighten our belts and work longer. Now, for the first time in many years, all the six or seven large trade union confederations agreed that a fight was necessary. Now, this is new because previously, governments had always been able to rely on the least combative federa uh, confederation, the CFTT, to sign an agreement and thus weaken the resistance. But not this time. Uh, and the unity of all the big confederations encouraged millions of people to get involved who might have hesitated uh, if the trade unions had been divided as they often are. And indeed, the Inter Sandical, that's the National Interunion Steering Committee, remains extremely popular uh, today. The revolt has revealed once more a widespread political class consciousness in the country. Large numbers of people not affected personally are joining the strikes and are joining the demonstration, just like the uh, Great Revolt of 2006, where uh, a mass movement forced the government to withdraw a law which made contract, work contract work worse for under-26s. Uh, but there were millions of over 26s who were in the streets, and the, the journalists couldn't understand that class consciousness. That doesn't come into their, 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 their categories here, so they just couldn't understand how older people would be interested. So it's, it's been very inspiring. Inspiring to see millions on strike and on the streets for each of 14 days of action, Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday, Tuesday, uh, and, uh, and so on. Inspiring to see small towns which have uh, lived through their biggest demonstrations since 1968 or sometimes since 1945 in Figeac, Aubenas, Vierzon, or Morlaix, and dozens more, you had demonstrations counting nearly a quarter of the population of the town. It's been inspiring to see universities blockaded and occupied, including some business schools, big business schools, uh, which have seen no action for since 1968. Uh, uh, on the demonstration, thousands of homemade placards. As you know, when there's thousands of homemade placards, that's a real sign. It's a real sign of the roots of the, uh, of the movement, of course, because it's, it's France, these included plenty of rude placards like, you know, the retirement age is like my ass. If I say no, you can't touch it, which I think is very French. Uh, is that rude in, in, in Holland? Well, there you go. Uh, it, was, it was inspiring to see uh, hundreds of students on a Paris demonstration, all, all chanting, were young, fired up and revolutionary, on a jeune des terres et révolutionnaire. And it was inspiring for me. I walked out of my house 200 yards up the road and the local mi middle school was blockaded by the students, 13, 14 year olds, big barricade in front of it, I've never seen this before, uh, with this huge placard saying, uh, if you spring 64 years old on us, we'll spring 1968 on you. So it's been fabulous to see all this. And also it's fabulous to see these last few weeks, the most obscure minister of Macron's government who visited the most out-of-the-way village was still always met with picket, pickets, bang, bandit, banging saucepans and chanting, uh, resign. Macron went to visit a school and suddenly the electricity was cut off. Uh, and you can see his, his staff, you know, hey, I thought you were bringing the generator. No, you said you were bringing the generator. And eventually he had to speak in the playground with no electricity. So there's been wonderful moments like that. The, uh, in a number of places across the country, electricity workers have been cutting off the power to police stations or symbols of capitalist power. Uh, and when some electricity workers were arrested for doing this, there was a, a regional strike in support of them. Just a last couple of anecdotes. There's a, uh, uh, there was a concert in Paris where a, a, a Norwegian pop star, girl in red, uh, asked the audience, said, oh, can you speak, can you teach me a little French? I don't know any French. And the entire audience is chanting, Macron, démission, Macron must resign. And she's like, oh, I wonder what that means. So great. Uh, th then finally, the Cannes fi Film Festival a couple of weeks ago, which is really a symbol of, you know, French wonderfulness uh, to the world. And as soon as the, as soon as Ju Ju uh, Juliette, uh, 
uh, Trier won the award. She made a speech uh, uh, attacking the government and saying uh, that these uh, the, the protests have been denied and repressed uh, in the most shocking uh, manner. The popularity of the movement is absolutely historic. Uh, you had 90% of employed people supporting. And at one moment, uh, uh, two months ago, 40% of the entire population was hoping that the movement should be more radical. So when the press does its usual thing, it's, have you seen those smashed windows? Isn't it terrible? The general atmosphere is, what do they expect? You know, they're not listening to us, what do, what do they expect? I remember there was one school teacher carrying around his homemade placard, I am not a violent person, yet. Uh, so, a really, so a really inspiring uh, uh, movement. However, the job of those of us who are Marxists, we, we are not paid to, well, actually, we're not paid at all, but we're not paid to applaud the working class. Uh, we're working, we're not even uh, supposed to just be building the movement in our own specific sector. We're supposed to be working at becoming the memory of the working class, the university of the working class, and that's why uh, the title is What are the Lessons of the French Movement? No suspense, three key lessons. Number one, the dreadful role of the trade union leaderships and what revolutionaries should do about it. Number two, the, the lead for a much smarter and deeper conversation with the, the new movements of radical left reformism. Uh, and number three, the importance of anti-racism. So there you go. There's the spoilers in from the start. Now, those are the three key issues, but I have a, a longer list of six, which I'm going to go through. Uh, I, I want to talk about the fact that we're in a war of position, then about the role of national union leaders, the need for a single confederation of unions is number three. Number four, you're, you're going to get used to this idea. We need more revolutionaries and better revolutionary organisations. In particular, we need to be able to act on what we know about mass strikes and trade union leaders. Number five, then, the need for a smarter conversation with left reformers, reformism and the importance of anti-racist uh, mobilisation. So let's go through. The, this is a war of position. We're, we're fighting a whole series of battles with the working class, with the ruling class, sorry. Uh, and the situation is often of many minor victories, defeats and concessions. So, for example, in, 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 uh, in France, uh, unlike in, uh, in, in, in many countries, my students, I work in a university, my students pay 300 euros a year. And the, 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 the social atmosphere is so tense and has been for the last 20 years that no politician, even a right wing politician, uh, will suggest to that students should pay the cost of university tuition uh, like they like they, they do do in England. Uh, and if we look at the present question of, of, of pensions, well, four years ago, Macron announced a completely different pension reform, which was even worse. It was based on a point system which prepared for longer, uh, further in the future, a privatisation of the pension system. Uh, after <coughs> huge strikes and demonstrations over several months. Macron was first obliged to make concessions to individual groups of workers and then to abandon his reform. He claimed it was because of the pandemic. That was not the case. He, he, he would have passed it a year earlier if there hadn't been the movement. Secondly, Macron had planned to move the retirement age from 62 to 65 and he was obliged eventually to put forward as uh, 64. And finally, uh, destabilised by the present revolt, Macron suddenly found money for student grants, which they, they hadn't been able to find before, uh, uh, and a, a vicious racist Im immigration law has been put on the shelf for the time being. So if they, we, when we push them back, uh, they, uh, we, we can win uh, in, in different parts of the, uh, uh, of the struggle. On the side of the workers, although the pension movement has not won, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in some sides, in, in many ways, both sides have lost. Uh, Macron has lost, but we haven't won. Um, uh, however, uh, this has really raised the confidence of workers to organise and strike. The present high rate of inflation has helped, but there's been a whole series of wages strikes over this last month uh, in the bus and metro system of Toulouse, uh, in the, uh, the cleaners of the Paris me metro, one in, one in four days. Uh, uh, they want improvements in wages and conditions, and they oblige the bosses to pay the wages they had lost during the strike. So some, some, some good uh, combativity there. And also on the workers' side, every one of the union confederations is noting lots of people coming and signing up and joining the trade unions uh, at the moment. There's no watertight partition between movements. Uh, Anti-racist and anti-fascist mobilisations these last three months have been bigger for a number of years. At the end of April, there were sizable anti-racist rallies in, uh, in dozens of towns. 
But the biggest lesson of the movement is the nature of national union leaderships. When you have 90% of employed people on your side and you've already done 13 individual days of action, it's not very difficult to think that you shouldn't, that the correct answer is not, let's have a 14th one. Uh, and in fact, the, the, they are failing, really the, the national trade union leadership are failing very badly. The national movement is led by the inter-union committee, the anti syndical which is an ad hoc body set up for the specific movement. It's made up of the leaders of all the national confederations, from those like the CFDT, best known for supporting some of the government's worst neoliberal projects, to those like Solidaire, which is really quite close to the anti-capitalist left. The inter-union national committee has almost uncontested authority over the national movement. On the evening of each day of action, they have a meeting and decide what comes next. And we don't know until they announce it. Is it another day of action next week or is it in three weeks' time or is it something else? We don't know. Now, on the positive side, it's, the, the, it's been 12 years since we saw such unity. On the negative side, all the unions together has meant that the less combative unions have set the national place. The very left-wing Solidaire Confederation has accepted, in the name of unity, to follow the one day a week, one day of action a week uh, strategy. The obvious strategy, 24 hours general strike, and then 48, and then 72, this is not, not, not rocket, rocket science, has never been touched. The nearest we came to it was in March, when the anti syndical called to close France down. Uh, this was the big, the, the, the big, the, the big slogan. But the, uh, Laurent Berger, the leader of the CFTT, immediately went on television to say that for him, this slogan was not a call for a general strike. Uh, whereas the leader of the CGT, who are more radical, uh, said he hoped there would be renewable strikes wherever that was possible. Um, it could have been very different. If the trade union leaders had had five mass meetings in five cities over five days on the slogan of general strike now, that could really have, changed, really have changed the atmosphere. The union leaders brought out the same old arguments. We don't want to lose public opinion. But public opinion was more radical than the, the, the leaders. Were. You know, occasionally, these arguments are better. You, know, you sometimes have movements where they say, well, we're very unpopular. But that's actually not the case. It was really a, a perfect example of, of how not to lead things. Trade union leaders are professional negotiators. Even in France, where national union leaders do not earn huge salaries, uh, I, I, I think the, uh, the national leader of the, the, the CGT earns something like a university professor, like me. So it's a good salary, but it's not like uh, in Britain where they're earning like huge uh, salaries of 100 to 200,000 pounds. Apart from not organising a general strike, the national union leaders also did not take seriously the collecting of money to help strikers. Most of this work was done by political groups or by regional trade union confederations. The France Insoumise, uh, left reformist group, collected a million un uh, uh, euros. The CGT regions, a few million uh, euros. But in the atmosphere of the popularity it was, the national le leaders could have launched a campaign. They could have, they could have collected hundreds of millions of euros. It was not, it was just, they just needed to want to. So what have the more radical sections of the, uh, the, the movement been doing? Well, Despite the excellent, creative and powerful initiatives taken by quite a number of regional and local union federations or rank and file uh, groupings, the national leadership has the authority to make things happen with millions. When the national leadership asked for something to happen, millions of people did it. When the regional or, or more politi or, or political groups asked for something to happen, you, you might get 20,000 which was excellent, but you know, the, it, it had to go through uh, the uh, national uh, uh, leadership. Um, one of the uh, slightly disappointing things uh, about the present situation uh, is that although it might seem obvious to some uh, uh, Marxists that the uh, na national union leaderships have been at least very disappointing, the national union leaderships have remained extremely popular. I spoke to a comrade in Marseille who insisted, and I think correctly, the dominant mood among strikers is not one of defiance towards the union leadership. So, for example, the decision of the CGT leader, one of the biggest uh, union confederations, uh, Sophie Binet, her decision to meet the government a couple of weeks ago, after months of refusing to meet the government, did not make did not cause huge waves in the union uh, membership. And excellent initiatives like the one I'm involved in, it's a petition, let's, turn, let's not turn the page. It sounds better in French. Um, uh, and we, we get hundreds of signatures, thousands, but you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it does not have a mass, mass following. 
But the other lesson about this is a, a longer term uh, a lesson. The most radical Union Federation, Solidaire, saw its national leadership completely cooperate with this unsuccessful strategy in the name of, in the name of unity. So it's almost as if every, every uh, Union Confederation joined the least combative, uh, the, which, is, which was being more combative than it usually is. Uh, and this is one of the key weaknesses of the French uh, trade, un trade union movement, having six different confederations. And indeed, over the last 30 years, uh, the strategy of grouping together the most radical workers in a separate union confederation has shown its enormous weakness. Um, over the last thir uh, 30 years, there have been a number of splits to the left uh, from trade union confederations, moving towards Solidaire, and many of these splits to the left of the unions have been supported by uh, the revolutionary left. Uh, and I think we're, we're paying the price. Now, if we had been in one confederation, in the same confederation, the more radical workers would have had far more influence uh, than uh, where they are. And the, the great problem of having different union confederations is that all year round they're in competition. There is elections for workers' representatives on health and safety committees, promotion committees, uh, all sorts of committees. Uh, and, the, and the trade union confederations are against each other at that moment, and then sometimes they cooperate. But there's a, there's a, a very strong building of a, an individual identity for each confederation, which is, in my opinion, not a good thing. In fact, I think that the determined class fighters should be pushing for a unification of all the union uh, confederations. Unfortunately, mo no, unfortunately, this is not the case of most of the anti-capitalist uh, left uh, in uh, France. So, what should Marxists be doing? Well. There are, several, there are several thousand Marxists uh, in, in the movement uh, in, in France, I mean Marxist activists, in a number of different, uh, different organisations, and I do not want to give the impression that I'm handing out good and bad grades to the different left organisations. Uh, there are thousands of revolutionaries in France, most of them have done more than I have to build the strikes of the movement, so I don't want to, be, uh, to appear too much to be the Red uh, Professor. Nevertheless, uh, uh, if Macron has been seriously bruised, we have not got rid of the attack on pensions. And revolutionaries have not played the role they, they should have. There has been no organisation setting up a public meeting in every town, general strike, why and how. There has been no organisation setting up a rally or a, or a picnic in front of the meetings of the anti syndicale of the Inter-Union Steering Committee, so picnic for a general strike in front of the meeting of the trade union meters. These are initiative, basic initiatives which were vitally necessary. Most revolutionaries and radical leftists have been taking the position the job of a Marxist is to do the maximum possible in his or her own workplace to extend the strikes. Now, of course, this is not untrue, but it's, a, it's very much uh, 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 um, insufficient. Even worse, many were defending what seems to me to be almost an anarcho-syndicalist position, we don't need the national leaders. Let's not talk about the national leaders. Rank and file organisation is what we need. But the problem is when the national leaders called for something, millions followed. And when the rank and file organisation called for something, there were tens of thousands. Of no, we pay the wages of the trade union leaders and we have to let them know in a very loud voice that they need to go much further or discredit themselves. And I think that uh, that is what uh, Marxists uh, uh, should be uh, doing. One of the things that stopped this happening is that uh, uh, an understanding of the, the role of the trade union leadership as professional negotiators with their specific social interests is, is very rare uh, in France. I have two more lessons. Number four, the racist card will be played. Uh, uh, for Macron today, faced with this incredible uh, opposition to him, every time he walks out of the house he's got a, de a, a demonstration, there, there are very few things he could do uh, except play the racist card, uh, from, from his point of view, of course. Now, Macron comes from a current of right-wing thinking which did not have as a priority attacking Muslims. But in France, attacking Muslims is so profitable, since the left and even the revolutionary left will put little effort into fighting these attacks, and so Macron has now taken on wholesale, he's appointed an interior uh, minister, uh, Darmanin, who is really very, very... Uh, a sort of wild-eyed uh, Islam Islamophobe. Uh, last year, a Muslim legal aid organisation was banned, and an Islamic an Islamophobic law against separatism was introduced. 
Although organisations such as the France Insoumise and the New Anti-Capitalist Party did denounce these laws, in, in Parliament, Jean-Luc Mélenchon declared, you are stigmatising Muslims with a useless and dangerous law. Nevertheless, in all left organisations in France, there is a whole bunch of people who think that Islamophobia either doesn't exist or is not a priority. And so the national leaderships tend to avoid the question. Um, the, and there have been several attacks by right-wing thugs on, mo on mosques recently. The other lesson I want to come up with is, uh, is the question of debating with the new reformists. Uh, the France Saint-Semis, a left reformist organisation, the France, France in Revolt, got 7 million votes uh, in the elections uh, last year. They have 70-something radical left MPs. Uh, on the day that Macron's government just survived a vote of no confidence, we saw the 70 MPs of the France Saint-Semis holding up to the cameras placards saying, see you in the streets. Uh, and last month, the leader of the Fran France Insoumise, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, was asked to comment on uh, the Brave M police squads, infamous for being very violent against demonstrators. And he said the squad should be dissol dissolved and that its members need psychological help, because you're not normal if you want to join a squad like that. So these are serious left reformists, and a thorough debate is needed, which is not being had. It's no good saying to radical left reformers, Workers' councils are better than radical left members of parliaments because they will answer, yes, but we have 72 radical members of left parliament. parliament. How many workers' councils do you have? Uh, the important thing is to have a, a sophisticated debate. The France Insoumise programme is based on the slogan for a citizen's revolution. Now, myself and a lot of people here think we need a workers' revolution. And that citizens' revolution is a slogan has lots of problems that need to be uh, that that, uh, that could uh, that could un un undermine it. But the vast majority of workers in France do not have this distinction between a workers' revolution and a citizens' revolution. So we need to have publicly the, the debate again and in a new and detailed manner about re reform or revolution. We revolutionaries have some pretty good arguments in France in the 1980s under François Mitterrand. A radical left socialist party government began making big changes. And after two or three years, stopped making, making big, big, big changes. This is a tremendous le lesson which needs to be studied and explained in detail. But the debate in France today is very one-sided. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the leader of the France Insoumise, did two one-hour lectures on what happened in the 1980s, why it will be different next time. Uh, every two years he, pu he publishes a book which more or less says the same thing. And almost all of the Marxists left in France say, oh, the reformists, we don't need to talk about them. Uh, so it's really a very, very, very uh, um, insufficient uh, approach for the moment. I think that revolutionaries should be organising, wherever possible, public debates. Citizens' revolution, what is it? Come to the debate and you have one Marxist and whatever left reformers you can get to, to, to come and argue with you. Uh, in every town. Uh, instead, uh, whereas it, the sad fact is that if you, if you search, now, now you have... Uh, uh, Far left organisations all have their newspapers online, so you can say, you know, what did they say about the France Insoumise this year? Oh, nothing. Okay, uh, so it's e it's easy to find. So we we now we do. I don't want to exaggerate because there are occasional local initiatives of this sort, uh, and and one of our weaknesses is that very often each town does what they want, which you know is good if you're organising a theatre, but not good for politics. Um, so yeah, so I would say that th those are those are the, those are the, the main lessons. We need to uh, understand the role of the trade union leaders, and also we need to explain it and explain it again and in detail, uh, because at the moment this is not what workers are thinking. Even the most radical workers are not saying are not really angry against the trade union leaderships. Uh, we, we need we need to we need to we need to work on that. Uh, now all the trade union federations today are finding that large numbers of people are becoming members. Class struggle works. We need to build our trade unions, recruit very widely. Anti-capitalists need to campaign for a unification of the confederations, one union confederation for one working class. We need to spread understanding of the role of trade union leaderships and run an ambitious and fraternal debate with the radical reformists who defend the idea of a citizen's uh, uh, revolution. I think one of the things, well, I know that one of the things we have in, in, uh, uh, in France is that there's a section of the revolutionary left who believe that reformism can no longer exist. Now, if you believe that reformism can no longer exist, you then, you, you then conclude, and some of them do, Jean-Luc Mélenchon is pretending to want change. But unfortunately, it's not true. So, <laughs> if you, uh, 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 so that's really held things up. And finally, of course, France, like so many other countries, needs a revolutionary organisation based on clear and creative application 
of Marxist theory about the role of trade union leaders, about the mass, strike, the mass strikes, about the role of Parliament. And uh, un unfortunately in France, I think it's perhaps because uh, French intellectuals became world famous um, uh, French anti-capitalist activists. We, 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 did, we don't talk enough about ideas. Uh, it's, it's, we talk too much about the, the practical uh, events. So at, in, at inspiring movements, uh, we don't know where it's going, but it's not, uh, uh, it's not defeated yet, although the, the, the law has gone through. Uh, it's difficult to know what will be the next, uh, the, 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 the next explosion. And certainly 35 or you know, 40 years of a high level of class struggle have, have given results. Uh, pension of poverty in France, I think it's four times lower than in Britain, and uh, only uh, only half as much pension of poverty as in as in Germany. You know, it does actually work, uh, but yeah, obviously uh, the movement has uh, made a lot of people see uh, that it could potentially go much much further, provided that we find the uh, organisation, the the currents, the, uh, the the thinkers and actors who can get. Uh, uh, the applications of Marxism out there uh, and, uh, and, and, and bring in a new generation uh, in that way. Now, there are uh, positive signs. I said uh, a number of the uh, revolutionary organizations are getting lots of new young people. Uh, and so, you know, we've got, we've got to hope that that keeps going in that, that, in that direction uh, and that uh, uh, the next time there's a big revolt in France, uh, that the whole structure uh, of, uh, of the capitalist state just uh, 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 starts uh, coming tumbling down. Thank you. Thank you.